Hello everybody and welcome back to my workshop. This video was made in response to a request from Klaus, uh, who I think is from Switzerland. And I recently published a video showing you how to program a jetty for thrust reverse when you're using a speed controller that has got bi-directional control. And Klaus wanted uh, yet more safety built into it. What he wants is to use to have to hold down a push button whilst he's operating the motor in reverse. And uh, if he's not pressing down on the push button, it would not go into reverse. But he also uh, realized that that could cause a problem. For instance, if he's running the motor in reverse and releases the button, the motor would stop. So it's possible to leave the throttle stick open and you then switch back into forward mode. The motor is going to burst into life to that throttle setting. So we've solved it all. Uh, I don't have a push button, but I do have a spring-loaded switch, which I will have to hold in place of it. So we can see that uh, the uh, direction switch is in the forward direction. My uh, speed controller safety switch is on the run position. And so let's take a little look at the throttle channel is number one. The flight mode's up here. I've got my usual default, which is normal fly around, flap mode one and flap mode two. Now, uh, if I operate the throttle, we can see what we're uh, getting is motor running in the forward direction. Stick back. If I switch to reverse mode, it does not go into reverse mode. It will still work forward. Because remember, Klaus wanted to press the button as well. So if we press the button, it's gone into reverse mode. And now we can operate it in reverse. Bring the throttle back, release that. It's still in reverse mode. But because I'm not pressing the button, pulling the switch, the motor will not run. And when I switch it back into one of the forward flight modes, it runs forward. So the additional safety built in is, uh, let's suppose I'm running it in forward mode. I've got the throttle open. I accidentally move the switch to the reverse. Doesn't happen. It stays happily running in forward mode, even if I very foolishly press the button as well. It stays running in forward mode. I have to get the throttle stick back to zero for it to go into reverse mode. There it's gone into reverse, and now it will work in reverse. I've left it running in reverse and let go of that switch. Foolishly, I've not pulled the throttle stick back. I go to switch the motor back into a forward mode. Look, it's still in reverse. And it won't go back into forward mode until I pull the throttle stick all the way back. There it's gone back into a forward mode and now we can go forward. So there's no risk of it accidentally swapping directions or bursting into life um, when you move the switch. You've got to have brought the stick back to zero. So it's a bit like the extra safe throttle cut, which still works perfectly, does all its job. I'll operate the throttle cut, throttle, servo does not move. I put it into reverse mode, I pull the switch, the throttle cut has overridden everything. I'll leave the throttle stick well forward. It's in reverse mode. Uh, I'm not pulling the switch. I'll take the throttle lock off. See, nothing's happened. I press the button, pull the switch. Nothing happens. I still have to bring the throttle all the way back for it to work. Okay, we'll take a look at how we've programmed this. It's got quite a lot of logic switches and a bit of mixing in it as well. OK, the basic setup was as per my initial video about how to do the programming. So we've got a reverse flight mode and we've got uh, function curves per flight mode for the throttle. So we've got the forward running ones. And if we go into the reverse flight mode, you get that. OK, right. Let's have a look at the logic switches that are required. It's quite hefty. 
Uh, we can ignore four and five because those are the standard ultra safe throttle cut ones for the moment. Right, we start off with reverse mode one, which is in my case SC and SG, that being the uh, forward and reverse switch and the push button, or in this case, spring loaded switch. Let's have a look at what's going on. So control one is the forward and reverse switch with the reverse direction being the switch on. And control two is the push button with on being when the button is pressed. The condition is and. Reverse mode switch, uh, logic switch two. Well, that's logic switch one. So it has to be that and that for it to come on. And control two is P4, which for me is the throttle stick. And it's this proportional style. So if you get that or that, keep pressing the prop button till you get that. And we're looking for a switch on point. Um, where is it? Oh, I have to reset it. So put it about there and press this, or you can manually set that number by swinging the programming dial. Okay. And then press reverse because the jetty will default to switching on when the throttle's up here and switching off when the throttle's back there, but we want it to switch on when the throttle is back there. So it's off up there, on back there by pressing reverse. Okay. Then we move on to the reversing uh, mode, logic switch three. And the input now is logic switch two. Uh, the next one is, in this case, logic switch six, which we shall come to in a second. And the condition is A on, B off. So when that goes live, the output of this will go on, which means that we had to have forward reverse switch in the reverse condition, press the button and bring the throttle stick all the way back to closed. And then that logic switch two goes on because A is now on, the output of this is on. Right. We can move things around. It won't go off even if we release the push button, open the throttle and move the forward reverse switch back to the forward condition. What it needs is condition B to make it switch off. And condition B is logic switch six. Let's have a look at that one. Right, logic switch six is your forward reverse switch, but this time in the forward direction, switching on. And once again, P4 being that switch with the throttle right at the back end. So you've moved the switching point way down to there and reversed it so it only switches off when you get back there. What that does is uh, mean that that switch will only go off when you've moved the uh, forward reverse switch forward and brought the throttle all the way back again. And its condition is AND. OK, there's all our logic switches set up. Let's go and look at what we do with them. And we go to fine tuning, free mixes, and we're mixing throttle to throttle. Uh, it has to be flight mode separate. And in all your flight modes, except for the reverse flight mode, no value, no switch. So I'll switch through my different flight modes. You can see it's empty, so it's not doing anything. But if we go into reverse mode, there we go. Now, having popped it into reverse mode, we can set it up to a master value of minus 100%. And the switch is your push button. And what this does is, uh, let's take a look at the switch. Uh, I think, yep. There we go. So let me have a quick think through this. Yes, the switch here is your push button released. In my case, it's the um, spring loaded switch back in the middle. So if you were to press the push button, the switch goes off. 
very important here. In other words, if you haven't held down that push button, this mixer is on when you're in reverse mode. What the mixer does is mix any throttle back to itself at minus whatever its own value is and sends the output to zero. So if we don't pull the spring-loaded switch or press the push button, this mixer is killing the throttle, but only in the reverse mode. By pressing the button, we switch the mixer off and the servo can move because we're not mixing it out itself anymore. And that's it. Uh, took me a little, a uh, few minutes of head scratching to get that one, but there you are. It's a good example of how you can do things that are apparently pretty complex uh, with the jetty system. Have fun with that one, folks.